We got shoes and coats on yet? Morning, and uh, we've been left to fend for ourselves this weekend. Uh, Sarah's gone off to London to see some friends, and um, we haven't really got any plan to do anything other than the kids are taking me to the shops now to no, work yeah. out what they want to um, want to have for the dinner tonight. Picnic. For a carpet picnic, and um, and then we're going to head into the woods later on to do some den building. So uh, that's all we've got planned today. No, uh, wish me luck. Well, that's all the boring jobs out of the way and we can finally get into the woods and have a play. First job is, um, we've just found our geocache. We've, um, we hit a geocache a couple of years ago and I've had a message to say that it's got all waterlogged. So we've, um, we've come to sort it out. If you don't know what geocaching is, look it up. It's absolutely brilliant. It's like a treasure hunt all over the world. It's fantastic. And um, yeah, it's lost its lid. We're gonna have to sort that out. Done. Yeah, we're so lucky to live in a place like this. It, um, the kids absolutely love it. Uh, and it's because of them, actually, I've come up with um, the topic I want to talk about today. And that is the future. And what can they expect when it comes to um, driving in the future? And in particular, autonomous driving. Let's go through the enchanted forest. Yeah! Look, Daddy! Daddy! Look, I was standing on a fox's house! So if I'm talking about them driving, I'm not looking way in the distant future. What I'm talking about is um, probably in 10 years time when pretty much they're doing their driving lessons or just started to drive. What, what will cars look like then? Is this a good place for a den? Yeah. Right, what we need lots of, in fact, do you see that fallen down tree over there? Yeah. That would be a good one to put the sticks up against, wouldn't it? Yeah. Can we use that? Yeah. We've done it. I'm not sure it's watertight, but uh, plenty of room, no, complete with our own Christmas tree. Um, that's a good afternoon's work, I'd say. And we're off again. So um, we're off again, the, yeah! I think in 10 years time, as far as um, the type of car that these two are going to be driving, I think it's probably safe to say, uh, yeah, you think you'll be driving a Jaguar, do you? And you're a Ferrari, high hopes indeed. So I think as far as, um, the types of cars that they're going to be driving when they start driving in about 10 years time. Um, we're probably looking at, you certainly there won't be cars you. with gears anymore. The, um, I think automatics or as far as electrics are concerned, it, there just won't be gears anymore. It's a very, I think personally, very antiquated system anyway. What's the matter? Help. What are you doing? Across that log. No, you're not going across that log, come on. Do you know what? It's a bit tricky trying to talk to you whilst stopping these two from falling in the river. So I think um, we'll carry this on when I get home. Well, there we go. Finally, uh, I've gotten to bed. A brilliant day, but um, it's been very long. So um, now I've got an opportunity to talk to you about, um, well, autonomous cars, I guess, and where we're going to be specifically in 10 years time, but um, I think the future, way off in the future, will be full autonomous driving, um, kind of car sharing, car subscription, however you want to um, look at it, we won't own cars. Cars will be on the roads uh, in their own capacity 24 seven, which as a result, will have less vehicles on the road, less overcrowding, um, less traffic jams, less pollution, everything, all the bad things that are going on at the moment. Uh, will be a thing of the past because we will have developed full autonomous driving. But that's for another day. 10 years time, do I think we're gonna be there? I don't. Uh, I think there will be an amount of it uh, to a level, but I just don't think we've got the systems in place um, to allow cars to make the correct decisions in every circumstance. Now. For me, when I test drove the uh, Hyundai Ionic, the full electric, uh, I was a little bit surprised. Maybe I should have done a bit more research on it before I, I, I got hold of one. Um, but when it took control on a uh, dual carriageway, I thought I'd just set up a, a cruise control and um, it obviously started reading the road and started steering for me. Uh, fantastic system. And when I realized what I was doing and how it worked, 
I was able to set it up properly onto a motorway and um, you know, that system, um, let's be honest, we're in the absolute infancies of um, autonomous driving at the moment, that system could all but drive the car without any input from me once I told it what, what speed I wanted to do and the distance I wanted to be. So we're kind of almost there on that very, very basic level already. What these cars need is very structured uh, road systems, very uh, kind of, I guess like a universal, this is what I'm driving on, this is what I understand, this is how I can read it, which is where dual carriageways and motorways, certainly here in the UK, uh, are absolutely brilliant because the, the lane markings, the systems, everything about them works for it. it um, wherever you drive in the UK, they're always going to be the same. And so long as the local councils maintain them correctly, which let's be honest, if we're going to have autonomous driving cars, then they're going to have to, something's going to have to be put in place for that. But as long as the markings are there, uh, that system in 10 years time, absolutely, I think, will be fault free, trouble free, uh, and we will be using that in everyday driving. When it comes down to town driving, and in particular, you know, around your local neighbourhood, or if you, you know, back tracks, if you live sort of very rurally, um, it's, it's, I think it's too difficult. I don't think that within 10 years we're going to have software and hardware in place that's going to allow us to do that. So what do I see? I see um, my kids driving um, EVs. So uh, as I said before, you can forget about having to worry about learning how to change gear. I just don't think that's going to be even featuring on their driving test. I don't think they'll need to worry about it. So uh, EVs that are going to be um, compact, uh, I think we'll be able to have a lot more control over them. So if we're concerned about uh, them driving too fast or you know, there's too much acceleration, whatever there is, I think we're going to be able to effectively program the cars. And I think that will work in conjunction with the insurance companies. And uh, I think you know, that's how we will manage the uh, costs of insurance in the future. Um, the, uh, there will be an amount of autonomy within those cars and I genuinely think it will be uh, your dual carriageways, motorways, you know, highway kind of situation where it is very scripted, uh, very obvious what the lane markings are and um, I don't think there's going to be an awful lot more than that. Uh, I think there'll be an awful lot of development around it. I mean when you've got lots of Google and Apple starting to, um, not even starting, they've been doing it ages now, looking at uh, how they can program software to make the hardware work you know there's going to be a result, but it's not going to be fast. Uh, and when it first comes out, it's going to be hideously expensive and um, it will take time to filter down to the likes of us. Um, I think a good glimpse into the future, uh, as far as EVs is concerned, it's got to be Tesla. Uh, if you look at their uh, autonomous driving packages they've got on their, well, their Model S and their uh, uh, Model X, it just seems to work at the moment. Now, I haven't experienced it myself. Um, but from what I've seen of it, we're pretty much in a position that I'm describing. As long as those um, lane markings are there, it can pretty much drive itself. So, uh, you know, in 10 years time, that will have filtered down to uh, the types of cars that I and my children will be able to buy. So let's hope the likes of Tesla and um, the other companies, as I mentioned, Apple, Google, and there's a million others, um, keep driving this forward, keep developing it, so that we do get to that point in the future, which um, you know, I can't wait for fully autonomous driving. I love driving, uh, but from a safety point of view and a relaxing point of view, I'd rather the car just did it for me personally. And then, then if I want that driving experience, I can go to a track or go somewhere where I can, um, I can do it in a safe environment. But every day, uh, there's so many things that I could be getting on with, which would be much more productive than driving a car. But that is way off in the future. But for now, that's where we are. So, uh, you know, only time will tell whether my ideas are right. What do you think? Do you think that um, I'm maybe being a little conservative? Do you think we're going to see full autonomous driving uh, much before that? Uh, let me know. Uh, stick your comments down below. Uh, and it's always a good discussion point. And, um, you know, there might be things out there that I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen are being developed that are going to push this forward an awful lot quicker than I'm expecting. So um, let me know uh, and uh, obviously where I can, as always, I'll try and reply to your comments. But for now, that's the end of today's vlog. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I've had a great day with the kids. So uh, remember to uh, like and uh, share if you're not doing so already and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Daddy, you have to help me pick and get up.
stop. Go on then, take it through. Sorry. Did you get into the ground? No, you look really nice. Daddy! 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 